Video number 236, dividing decimals. Divide 48 divided by 6 tenths. Now we're going to take a look at this problem in the long version, and then we're going to summarize with a shortcut. What we would first do is take the division problem, turn it into a fraction. Then you can multiply fractions by 1. So we're going to multiply by 10 over 10. So multiply by 10 over 10, which is 1. Therefore, 480 over 6, which is definitely a lot easier. Therefore, 6 goes into 480, 480 80 times. Next one, we're gonna, now it looks the same, I just moved the decimal over, so let's see how it all shakes down. Well, we have the 48 one thousandths in the numerator, then we multiply the top and bottom by a thousand, because you had to move the decimal over three places. So we end up with 48 over 6,000. Then we would change the 48 to 4.000. We do this to allow ourselves the ability or the visual of thinking of 48 as 48,000. So this, we would use 6,000 goes into, four, see 6,000 does not go into 48. It doesn't go into 480. It doesn't go into 4,800, but it does go into 48,000 exactly eight times. So therefore the solution is eight one thousandths. There is a pattern that does occur. Instead of changing this to the fraction form and then multiplying the top and bottom by a 10, we would just simply move the decimal over for both numbers the same amount, which is essentially the same thing. Instead of multiplying by 10 over 10, you move the decimal over the same amount of times because in the previous video, 235, we learned that multiplying by 10 just simply moves the decimal over. Here you move the decimal over three places, one, two, three, one, two, three, you're all set. So that's how we would end up here. Let's take a look at another example. We have 16 and a half divided by 5 and 91 one hundredths. Well, in this case, because of the pattern we just observed in the last problem, we would change this to 591 divided by 1650, okay? Because we would move the decimal over two places for each number, essentially doing what? multiplying both the numerator and denominator by a hundred. Now, they want us to round to the nearest hundredth, which means we are going to need a couple places past the decimal. In fact, we should probably use this third zero because we're gonna need the number that's the digit that's in, the number that's in this digit place, the one thousandth place, to help us round to the nearest hundredth. So we're gonna go through here and go ahead and divide 591 into uh, 1650 and that you might think it would happen three times but three is too many because this is almost 600 which is if you multiply that by three that's 1800 so let's just go ahead and use two so two goes into the 1600 number or, excuse me the, the, the number that 591 goes into 1600 about two, two times here so we get a two here when you multiply we get an 18 carry the one then we get 11 because you added the uh, two times five plus the one then subtract down, we get an eight. Then call this a four. Then call it a 14. You'll get a six, then you put a four here, okay? Then we're gonna bring down this zero. Now the moment we bring this zero down, this decimal goes up here. Of course, we could have done that at the beginning. But the decimals will always be lined up. So we bring down the zero. Now, we ask ourselves, 591 goes into this 4600 number how many times? Well, 591 times two gives us almost 1200. So, we, if we did four times two, that would be eight. So if we tried eight, we're gonna get something that's a little bit more than 4,800, right around 4,800, maybe 4,700, because this is close to 1,200, right? So 1,200 times four is 4,800. So if we did four times two, which is eight, that would make this about 4,800, which is too many. So let's go down to seven. And obviously, you can just guess and check. If it's too many, then you just bring it down one. If it's if you can fit another 591 in, then you increase it. So we got seven. Seven times nine, 63, carry the six. Seven times five is 35, plus six is 41. So then we're gonna subtract that. So we're gonna subtract here, that's gonna give us a 10. Then what I do is I make this 10 borrow from the 468 to make it 467. I just I just see it that way is easier. Then you subtract, you get four here, then you get five here. Then we're gonna bring down this zero, okay? Now we're gonna divide 591 into 5430. Now, <clears throat> this is right around 
5400, this is right around 600. So how many times does 6 go into 54? Well, 6 definitely goes into 48 uh, 8 times, and 6 goes into 54 9 times. Let's go ahead and use 9, because this is a little less than 600. It's a little more than 5400, so that should work out. Now we'll multiply 9 times 1. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times 5 is 45, plus the 8 is 53. Then subtract, so we get a 1 here. This goes to 542, so therefore 1 and 1. Then we're going to bring down this last 0. So now we're going to ask ourselves, how many times does 591 go into to 1100? Well, it's definitely not more than 5. It's probably, well, actually we know for sure that it's not quite 2. It's only 1. So therefore we can put a 1 here safely. So therefore we can say the solution is approximately 2.79 because they do ask us to round the nearest 100 so we only needed that third spot to decide what we would do with the 79. All right, next one. Notice the problem is very similar. We do go ahead and um, we have a very small number divided by 591. This number is not even one one hundredth of a, of a whole number. So we just do the same thing except we move the decimal place over now what you always do here, and in the last problem, we did only move the decimal place over two spots. So that's going to happen the same way. Now in this case, they want us to round the nearest thousandth. So we go ahead and do 591 divided into, um, well, 1.65, right? Because we move the decimal place twice for both values. Then this is 1.65, then we're just going to put a bunch of zeros. How many? Well, we really only need the three because we're going to round nearest down. So we're going to put the fourth one here to help us with the rounding. Now, the, 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 the division, excuse me, is going to work out to the same way because we use the same digits. Of course, I created these two questions here. So we're just going to go ahead and work that out. 591 goes into the 1650 twice. Now, look what happened here. This is what's different about this problem. We definitely did 591 into 1650, it only goes twice. But, because we did it into 1650, we passed up these two positions here. So therefore, we put the decimal up here, and since there's nothing there, we go ahead and put a zero. All right, so then you just multiply down, you get the two, 18, there's 11, so there's eight, and then we, of course, go ahead and go through the process that we just did a moment ago, and we got the 468. Now we're gonna bring down this zero, and now we're, this is going to help us decide how to round because we're rounding the nearest thousandth. Well, this is the one where we went ahead and did it seven times. Now, just to show you here, if you tried eight, it's going to be too much. Um, eight times nine, 72. There's a seven. Um, five times eight is 40, so 47. It's just, just barely too much. So that's why we would go ahead and use seven. But of course, we're actually done with this problem because they want us to round the nearest thousandth. We know the next one's going to be a seven. So therefore, we would use 0 .003 to describe this, the solution to this division problem, which is also known as a quotient. So this is dividing using decimals, and we will see you in the next one.